Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise coming off of the month of June, heading into July, close to the All-Star break now, and really our team is doing extremely well on offense, to be honest. Look at everybody just straight hot going into All-Star break. Hopefully that does not cool off at all. Actually, Jeremy Pena has dropped an average to 266. He was hitting about 300 at the start of the last episode in the beginning of the month of June after the draft. But Joe Musgrove is probably the the hottest player on the team. 12 and one point whatever whip. I mean, he is just killing right now. Ryan Stanek as well, 0 0.90 whip, and he is the best reliever in baseball. Actually, has the most all-star votes as a relief pitcher carlos santana who made the all-star team last year is fourth in voting so uh it doesn't look like he's gonna make it but looking at third base i did not see yuan mancata this guy is hitting over 320 there he is he's number four you gotta be kidding me matt chapman is the only guy that should be above him right now and wow he's fourth in voting i am surprised to see that now, Jay Cave is hitting 305, and I'm glad that he's second, at least in right field, because last year he hit about 325 and did not make the All Star game. So we end up trying to get to the All Star break now, and we get another trade offer for Keenan Middleton. Remember, at the end of last episode, the Yankees tried to sign, tried to trade for him, and now the Cardinals are looking to trade uh, Andrew Knizner, and this is not going to work for us. I mean, the Giants are, and this is not going to work for us because everybody wants Middleton right now. I don't know what it is, but it seems like he is a hot commodity, and I just want to hold him because. If these teams want Middleton like that, I don't know why they want him. He's not on the trade block or anything. But if they want Middleton, he must be really good. So let's move on to this game. Here in the bottom of the ninth inning, here versus the Tampa Bay Rays. Trying to get some wins before All-Star break. And there is a ground ball to second. And Brad Hand gets the, gets the save in this one. And we get the win. Actually, Ryan Stanek gets the win. Speak of the devil. And Corey D Dickerson goes two for four in this game a good win and that's versus our uh pretty a pretty good trading opponent trading partner with us we've made i think about three trades with them remember we got randy arazarena we also traded for yamankata it was another trade i made with them i forgot who we exactly traded for but we made three trades with them i like the tampa bay rays they're an easy team to bargain with so here's Corey Dickerson with a little bit of a hit streak. I just want to see if we can get that going with him, and we do. We get the hit, and Corey Dickerson at an 11-game hitting streak right now. And remember, this is a team we tried to also traded Tyler Glass now to, and I believe he actually came from there, came to us, and then went right back. And we ended up giving him the loss in this game, and then Trevor Richards, who we acquired from them, gets the win. So that's just pretty interesting. So let's just keep moving on to the all-star break. Now, I know a lot of you guys uh, say, why do I quick manage? But it's because I like to get through seasons. If you play every game, it's going to be long. But coming out of that one, Justin Thompson is hurt with a broken leg one to two months. Now, that really sucks because I do like our outfield prospects, but I like Justin Thompson a lot. He covers a lot of ground in the outfield. He is an excellent fielder. His bat hasn't come around yet, but his fielding is really, really good right now. And then looking at who we have to bring up, I think Dustin Breeze makes a lot of sense because he can run and he's hitting a lot better than Akil Badu. I don't need to rush up Badu. He's only 24 years old and he's a potential. Who even knows if he'll touch the field at the MLB level? He hasn't hit above 280 at AAA. Maybe he's one of those guys that once you move him up, he'll do uh, well, just kind of like Jeremy Pena did. Jeremy Pena was never a guy that hit for average at the AAA level as well. So, we get another trade offer. And this one's for Keenan Middleton. I'm getting sick of everybody trying to get Keenan Middleton at this point. And actually, this one is not for Keenan Middleton. This is for Joe Musgrove. Interesting. So the Rays, they, I just literally just talking about how they're a good trade partner. They want to keep trading with us, but it's just, I'd be drunk if I traded Joe Musgrove, the hottest pitcher in baseball right now. And I don't want to do it, obviously. I just signed him and he's our star pitcher. 
Why would I get rid of him at this point? So now we move into another opportunity for Corey Dickerson to extend this hit streak. And he does jump on that pitch and hits it right up the middle. Corey Dickerson, impressive so far. Maybe not hitting for the high average, but doing extremely well since we signed him. He's at 15 games on his hitting streak. And we actually go on to win that game 2-1. to one. I mean, I like what I'm seeing from this team. And going into all-star break, we definitely need it. So I am excited. I am really, really excited, actually. Alex Wood gets a win, and that's a big reason why I'm excited because Alex Wood has not been pitching very well. And to get him a win like this, it definitely means a lot. Now, we move into another situation versus the Yankees. Alex Reyes on the mound. We're about six games away from the All-Star break. And Moncada is hitting 337. He is on a tear now. And here we are in the bottom of the ninth inning. We have him hitting in the three hole at this point now. And he hits one too short. And it's going to be into the shift. So the third baseman will field that one. And that is Urshela, I believe, fielding that one and throwing the first. So Michael Brantley had to play three for four in this one. He hits one deep to right field. That one is going to be off the wall. Didn't have the carry to get over the wall that time, but it is a double here with one out. So now we go ahead and pinch run Michael Brantley. He is kind of slower. So we will we'll bring in Yanni Hernandez out of uh, the dugout and see what he can do at second. Maybe even swipe a bag, but I'm not going to try it here on this 1-0 pitch. Here's Carlos Santana at the plate. He gets a hanger, and it's going to be just a ground ball to second, but at least we move the runner over. Two outs here. Scooter Jeanette, Mr. Clutch in the playoffs for us. I'm starting to get him more playing time because I like his bat. He hits one to short, and it's just a lazy line drive, and that one will be caught. So now we use quick manage, and we give up a home run, and that ends up being the game there, and we actually get the loss. Now the Yankees are maybe not competing as well as they probably should with all of that talent, and we beat them up a couple of times, and this time they get the win, though. Ryan Stanek actually gives up that three-run homer, I believe, to Glaber Torres, by the way. He had a home run, a few RBIs in that one as well. So we're still winning going into All-Star break. That one was just one loss. Now Dickerson is on an 18-game hitting streak now. Let's see if he can keep this alive versus Corey Kluber and our rival Texas Rangers. And we are at home. Let's see what Dickerson can do. So here on a 3-2 count, two outs, and he hits one down the line. And that one does land foul, so this at-bat does continue. Corey Dickerson continues it, and here a pitch on the outside, and this one's popped up, and it looks like it's going to be run down. Dang, if that one could have already been, uh, the one before that could have been in play, that would have been an epic hitting streak for Corey Dickerson, but it ends and Joe Musgrove gets yet another win. In a 2-1 to one victory, he gets this win, and that is amazing, man. We could possibly sweep the Rangers going into the All-Star break, and another trade offer. This time, it's the Mariners that want to offer us a trade, and they want to trade us Shed Long. Wow, I am surprised at this. I guess they have Donnie Walton, who's definitely a better second baseman, but to give up a 28-year-old, or 27-year-old, I should say, a potential second baseman and man this is interesting i mean they want keenan middleton but now that i know that they want keenan middleton i could always hold on to keenan middleton and possibly even trade him to them if i do want shed long but i just don't think right now is the right time to give him on keenan middleton he's doing pretty well for us out of the bullpen and to lose a veteran in the bullpen right now especially when we're winning I don't think we need a second baseman. It's not like a key piece for us to win games. And I'm pretty happy with Yanni and Scooter and uh, Jeremy Pena. So I'm going to skip out on that one. I, I might revisit that one when the trade deadline comes around. But right now, I don't think I'm going to do it. So then we move into the all-star break. And we actually have somebody for the first time in the home run derby. It's going to be Jake Cave. So, okay, so J.K. makes it 25 home runs. That's actually five more than he had all of last season. So he is hitting extremely well. He and Moncada are doing 
crazy good right now and they should both make the all-star game and just looking at Jay Cave let's see who we go up against it looks like we're going up against Alvarez we are in the eighth seed and we have the timer on so we're gonna put it at one minute and I want to see what we can do here in this one minute so we will play this all the way through here's Jay Cave it looks like that ball came in just a little slow so we swung and miss on that one but the next pitch he drives deep and it looks like it had the distance and it was just foul we straighten that one out hit a liner next pitch and that one's driven deep it looks like it has the carry and that one should be our first home run that one goes 398 to right field the next pitch right back to the same spot is it fair and it looks like it is 389 all right so here's JK now in a groove hitting three straight that one was crushed and that's a home run to right field that one was 424 can he make it four in a row this one's hit down the right field line and it's just foul so he has the carry but just a little bit early this one's deep too but it looks like that one's way way foul and now with a few seconds left two he hits this one deep is it fair and it's not so we actually just spoil away like five home runs that time and they were all foul but Jake Cave only hits three in the first round so that brings up Alvarez who is literally 99 overall in this game and in the first pitch he drives it deep 426 feet and that brings up the next pitch that one is going to be foul okay so we're still in this we still want him to only hit less than three that one's foul okay keep hitting them foul Alvarez and now this clock continues to run it looks like he's taking his time getting back to the plate and then he drives that one deep that's gone that's a no doubter 415 feet into the stands and now with about 20 something seconds left let's see if we can hold them off oh he doesn't swing at that one all right 20 seconds left and he hits this one deep and that one is gone that one has carry that one was the deepest one I've seen, 451 feet, and now it's tied up. He hits this one deep. Does it have the carry? And it does. 410 feet, that one makes it, and we lose the home run derby in the first round. Alvarez beats us out, and George Springer actually ends up winning the home run derby here. Hopefully we're back here next year. Jake Cave has definitely surprised people. I did not expect him to be this good in this franchise. And now he's in the All-Star, at least in the All-Star festivities here in the Home Run Derby. Hopefully he makes the All-Star team as well after that snub last year. So now we are at the All-Star game. And let's see who didn't make it for us. On the mound, Joe Musgrove. How is he not the starting pitcher in this game? 14 and 1, 215 ERA. Has a 105 whip, 90 strikeouts to 28 walks, but Chris Sale is. I think this is just a popularity thing, and honestly, I'm going to start Joe Musgrove because he honestly deserves it. I mean, he's having an unprecedented year. I mean, career highs in literally everything and has the most wins in baseball, one of the lowest whips as well, and he's doing extremely well. Ryan Stanning makes it .91 whip off of 91 innings pitched. I mean, he is having an amazing year, still doing really, really well as far as his progression. He's at 88 overall, even at 31 years old. He is still going up. That is a good sighting. And then let's just see who's who made it with our bats. And it looks like Andujar made it over uh, Moncada. I mean, that is interesting. And then David Bodie makes it. Okay, so this is just weird. So we had him hit 331 two seasons ago, and he did not make the All-Star game. Now he hits 258 and makes it? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. He is somehow on the team. I know every team has to have one representative, and I hope that he's the only one from the Rays. Jake Cave does make it, though. Look at the progression that Cave is making, though. Plus seven in power versus left. I mean, he is doing extremely well with his bat. Hitting 292, actually down from last year, and he made it. I mean, that's the type of thing that I'm talking about. I think at the All-Star break last year, he was hitting about 330 and did not make it. He's either hitting 320 or 330. I can't remember which one. And he is our only one, as far as positional players, 
who make it. I'm really, really disappointed in that. Moncada deserved to be in it for sure. He got snubbed. So here are the all-star starters for the NL. Looks like Keston Hero makes it for Milwaukee along with Bregman. Uh, Willie Adams and Bryce Harper make it for Philly. And then playing for Colorado is Mookie Betts. He is not on the Dodgers like he is in real life. Uh, he actually, actually uh, did not sign an extension with the Dodgers. He actually signed with the Rockies in free agency a couple of years ago. So now let's see what Joe Musgrove can do. He does get the first batter to fly out to left field. Here is Mookie who swings and misses. And that's a nice slider from Musgrove. He gets his first strikeout of the game as that brings up Bregman hitting in the three hole and on a three two count. Ground ball gets through the infield and that one will be the first hit of the game for either team. And that brings up Cody Bellinger here in the four hole one two count and he swings and misses on the inside slider. So two K's for Musgrove. I'm only going to pitch him one inning and I'm only going to focus on our guys. So now we move on to the sixth inning. Here is Ryan Stanick on the mound and he gets uh, Willie Adams to swing and miss. And that brings up Bryce Harper one two count and he's just looking. A splitter on the corner, and can he strike out the side here? Wilson Contreras, the catcher at the plate, and he will hit a ground ball to first, an easy ground ball. And we get a one, two, three inning here for Ryan Stanek, and we fast forward on to the ninth inning now, and here is Jake Cave up for his only at bat of the game because he did not start. Coming off the bench, he is pinch hitting, hitting 292 on the year, and he hits a ground ball up the middle. And he beats it out. So there is a pretty good game from all three of our all-star players. And he gets a hit. Uh, no runs given up by either of our pitchers. Almost a 1-2-3 inning by both. But still, really good. Both pitchers get two strikeouts in one inning. And I'm actually pretty pleased by that. The NL does win this game. And Ronald Acuna does get the all-star MVP. But I cannot talk about All-Star break without talking about Yan Makata and how he got snubbed. I cannot believe it. Hitting 321 over 1,000 OPS. This is ridiculous. 24 home runs, too. It's not like he wasn't hitting uh, home runs. And he maybe had 80 strikeouts. But still, I mean, he's hitting extremely well. And just looking at what we have left here on the schedule, I think now this could be our run as we look at our divisional games here in August, I mean, we have quite a few of them. And right now we're sitting here at 57 and 41 in the AL West. And we are, I think we have a pretty good cushion here. I mean, if we win these divisional games, I could see us running away with the division, much like the Angels did with us last season. And just looking at how we're doing, we're actually pretty good on the road. 26 and 22, which isn't that bad. And I think that that's going to be the thing that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to win some road games and see what we can do. I think we're hitting pretty hot going into All-Star break. So hopefully that continues here after All-Star break. So the second half coming next episode. Make sure you hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on.